night watch her fly free Cross the still of the dawn If peace were a mountain We'd gather
A, a very warm welcome, everyone, and Om Shanti. <laughs> what an interesting segue into our evening conversation, just having our time to Om. And then, of course, we've been enjoying playing some of our service videos. It just instills the memories of all the incredible work that the meditation museums have done and will do after our lockdown is complete. <laughs> or, or our stay-at-home order is benito. And then to go into the beautiful meditation video that love, peace, and wisdom are our three golden keys. And then to see the Zoom burnout. <laughs> Today's conversation on Zoom burnout. How many of you have had more than more than 20 Zoom calls in the last two months, so to speak. How many of you? Raise your hands, put it in the comment. Tell me, are you tired of Zooming so far? As much as the stocks are going up and everything and it has connected us in a ways that we wouldn't have been connected as easily and I give blessings to Zoom. I give blessings to the founders. I give blessings to the investors. I give blessings to Zoom because if they break down or something, I don't know what the world's going to do. Zoom has taken the world over by storm and it's basically connecting us. And something that I've been hearing from many of our Brahma Kumari members all around the world, it's like, so how are you? Zoomed out. So what are you doing? Zooming. So what did you do last week? Zoomed. I had like 10 calls, 20 calls. And so... I think we have done over 100 Zooms. You know, we've done like, well, we've done over 100 video productions in the last month and a half. But for the Zoom calls, it's been quite a lot as well. Peace Village, our retreat center in the Catskills, which is also closed, they did a retreat two weekends ago on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I have to say it was also quite pleasant. It was well done. But what if we didn't have Zoom, Skype, all the other WebEx programs that are out there to connect us? Do we have the power of our inner silence to transcend the power of science? Wasn't it that when people were inventing products, they were in a quiet place? Weren't they thinking deeply before they came up with their inventions? Have we allowed the science to take over our lives completely? Even though we're isolated in our homes, have you given your phone a break, television a break, Zooming a break, <laughs> Skyping a break, text messages, YouTube a break? And what would life be like without them? What would you do with your time? Just give it a little bit of thought. What would you do with no Zoom, no cell phone, no YouTube, no Skype? Let's take it a further step. No Wi-Fi, just a landline. Hmm. We had no idea the world would have us locked down in for God knows how amount of time we have to still be here. But we weren't expecting the world to go on pause. We weren't looking for a global pause physically. We've spoken about it on many meditation programs that we've done. Have a global pause. We've asked people to pause for a minute of silence. We participated in the Global Silent Minute, which you can find on Facebook or online. And on December 22nd, we asked the world, just take a minute of silence. We've done global meditation coherence groups. We've done global meditation. We've done global prayer. And then we went along our merry little way. And now we don't go anywhere. We're home on Zoom. We're doing birthday parties on Zoom. We're doing funerals on Zoom. We're doing meetings on Zoom. We're doing yoga on Zoom. We're catching up with our friends and families on Zoom. 
We are now educating children. If it's not on Zoom, it's something equivalent to Zoom. Science. Quite powerful of a machine, isn't it? We're waiting for a vaccine that we're hoping the scientist will discover because of their inner power of reflection and silence. The whole energy of silence is so needed. And yes, haven't you loved the quietude of the planet? Earth Day was incredible. The earth was happy. It was celebrating. The birds were singing. The winds felt great. The ozone layer is finally closing up. Yesterday I said opening and I meant like open up to close, so forgive me. But it's finally closing. The waters are cleaner. The air is fresher. Can you imagine? Natural. The power of silence. Is it more impactful than science? I want to read you something that I came across. It's in our morning teachings. And I thought that this would be really useful for you to kind of sink in. And feel free to take out a pen or paper or just record this. And I want to thank Aditi for putting these together for me. The power of science, not even like it's competing with, with science, the power of silence is not that it's competing with science, but I think there is a mystical, magical power if your mind is void of waste and negative thinking. And um, the only thoughts in your consciousness are thoughts that are connected to your eternal beauty, your eternal value, your eternal worth. And the more that quality and value emerges from within you, you are less peaceless you become more peaceful. And the energy of that peace starts to accumulate more and more in your personality than you naturally become silent. Listen to this. This is from our teachings of the Raj Yoga Meditation of the Brahma Kumaris. And I just had to share it with you. I remember three years ago talking to Reverend Sylvia and telling her, Sylvia, I just, I just need to work on my silence. I needed to increase. And I've told this story before about Guru Swami Vedata, who pulled me over from a speech I gave at the Swedish embassy. And he just beckoned me down and he says, your power is in your silence. And I keep feeling this call and it's not an absence of sound. It's an absence of any, any notion in my mind that's just not constructive or useful. It is all about the divinity, the worth, the energy of God's love in your mind. We're not really that separate from God, but if you don't have God's love in your mind, there's going to be a lot of chaos. You know, so many people are blaming God for the condition of the world, but it's people who lack the energy of God's love in their mind that will actually allow people to suffer people to go to bed hungry, to hurt somebody, to traffic children. It's when the mind is void of God's love, who we call here Baba. And I want you to think about each time you get upset with somebody. Was God rich in your mind or was he out of the mind? So the energy of silence will give us a lot more insight to really recognizing the thoughts that we're having and the choices that we make according to those thoughts. Think about that. Is my inner silence so discerning that I will choose the best thoughts possible and the best choices of action? Think of it. So here I'm going to share with you some points and these are really deep so I'll read them very slow. This was from a Merli on March the 20th, 2000 and, sorry, March the 16th, 1986. The, your eternal form is of sweet silence. And your eternal, imperishable sanskaras, which are your deep personality traits, is of silence. It is of silence. So imagine if that is you, 
if your eternal personality is stillness, is stability, is silence, then what's happening? Listen to this one. April the 15th, 1994. Very deep revelations are in these teachings. Where science has failed, you can do whatever you want with the power of your silence. Now let the soul begin flying at a fast speed with your soul power. Where science can no longer take care of the body, but you start to create the right kinds of thoughts to heal your body, then you're at a fast speed. It's beyond even what the, 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 the medical profession can do. Here's another one. February the 18th, 2018. For world transformation, experiment with the power of silence. Spread the vibrations of the power of silence everywhere. Government, religion, science, they're all in extreme upheaval at this time. Even science is now not able to make matter function properly. But there are many who say it has to happen because the authority of science is based on having to work with matter. So matter too is not on the control, even though they have the facilities of science. How many of you have got stuck with your Zoom? <laughs> when you were trying to make it work and press this button, press this button, and it's not working. Some have gone into extremes and are living in distress. Take a look at religion. Religion is looking towards the gurus and the scientists are also thinking, what can we do? How can we find a cure? When will we be able to find the cure? It is at such time when the upheaval in the minds of people, especially in those three areas, politics or government, religion and science, the power of silence becomes a touching power, an inspiration. You catch the thought. And your catching power and your ability to catch the right thought at the right time will be very, very essential. Without the power of silence, there will have to be great effort and still there'll be less reward. Power of silence, you will attain that when you are in your tip-top stage. No waste, no petty issues, no jealousy, no competition, no expectations, no hate, no, no, no anger, no manipulation, no attachment, no greed, no lust, no anger. When you are in tip-top shape, you, your thoughts are no longer serving those energies. So when you stand at the top, at the peak of your stage of consciousness of your game, but even, for example, when you stand at the top of a place, you can see everything very clearly, can't you? In the same way, your stage at the top will be the most important stage. When you reach the stage of deep silence, you will be able to see everything that others cannot see. Mm. Isn't that powerful, Sister Gita? Yes, indeed. It's very wow. If a soul is not able to transform himself, he has the desire but is unable to do so, how can you have forgiveness, mercy, and compassion? When the, soul, when the soul is struggling to have mercy, forgiveness, and compassion for himself, 
and they don't know how to apply that to themselves, it is through your power of silence that will offer that soul enthusiasm and zeal to give them the courage to move forward once again. Visualize it. I don't mean silence where you don't say anything because something is wrong. I'm talking about pure silence that is equivalent to God's presence. At the moment, your experience of the power of speech and the power of the instruments of physical activity and physical service is like instruments that are still using science. But the instruments of power, the instruments of the power of silence are the following. So write these down. Number one, pure thoughts. Number two, pure feelings. Number three, the language of your eyes. To experiment with and to experience the power of silence, one needs to be introverted and remain in solitude. So just look at the opportunity that we have received to be able to apply the power of silence. If we use this particular time in a worthwhile and useful way, we can be benefited tremendously, tremendously. So in this particular time here, this, this beautiful space that I've created about the power of silence, I'd like you to go into a meditation of inner silence. It's by one of our brothers, Brother Anthony Strano. And for the next few minutes, just stay in that space and just think about your inner world for a little. Has your inner being become filled with pure thoughts and pure feelings? Pure thoughts and pure feelings. And do your eyes reflect this? I told you the other day I was walking around and we all had on our masks and all we could see were each other's eyes. And some eyes I could see there was kindness, some eyes I could see there was a lot of fear, there's some eyes I saw a lot of anger. There was one lady I saw a lot of God in her eyes. The eyes were reflecting the stage of that soul, how they've been living, what have been, what are those thoughts? What are the choices that you're making? We now have a state of solitude and introspection to build ourselves like never before, to build our inner world like never before, and to come out of this absolutely right. So take a deep breath and enjoy this meditation, and I'll see you shortly. If we do not know how to be silent, it becomes very difficult to make our actions creative and meaningful. If we don't know how to experience inner silence, it's so easy to become the puppets of routine. And in time, this routine makes our life arid, dry, even empty mechanical. It is silence that gives oxygen to the mind. And we take breaks during the day for many things, coffee, tea, speaking, but a very useful and beneficial break is to take a break for silence. A silence break means being able to step back and seeing things 
in a fresh way. I step back from the action and the responsibilities around me for a few moments. When I step back, I become still and I begin to observe. When I become an observer, then I'm able to see a clearer picture. I'm able to have perspective. Like the caterpillar, the caterpillar only sees what is in front of its nose. Plodding along, it's eating, it's heavy, it doesn't see around itself just what is in front of itself. But a bird, a bird, once it takes off from the ground and as it flies higher and higher and higher, it's able to get a fuller picture. And a fuller picture is necessary if it needs to know where it has to find its food, where it has to find a new home, where it has to find water. And in the same way, if I'm able to step into silence, be still, become an observer, then I am able to get a true picture. That is, I'm able to find clarity. And when there is clarity, there will also be peace. When the mind is peaceful, when the mind is clear, then I'm able to step back into action and make the right decisions and not waste time running round in the same circles again and again, meeting the same problems again and again, facing the same difficulties again and again, and wondering where is the solution. Silence enables me to find the solutions that are appropriate to every moment of my life. This is not a difficult thing to do. Simply I need the attention to give this oxygen to my mind. Where there's oxygen, there's always life. Life is maintained. So as I value silence, I will use my time, my energy and my consciousness in a more economical and more accurate way. There are so many occasions that I sit in silence and um, the answers come. 
I don't need a degree. I don't need advice. I don't need to read a book. I don't need to listen to a commentary or someone's idea of how I can fix myself. I just, um, you go inside and your answers are there, but you have to go deep enough inside. And even though today we're talking about Zoom burnout, which is a scientific contraption, and do we have enough of ourselves do we have enough inner power that's even stronger than the force of science? And even though you and I are communicating right now through a camera, which somebody invented, and it's connected to Wi-Fi, someone invented that. Scientists took a, a ship up to the space, planted satellites up there, and we we're able to connect via some sort of a Wi-Fi. Some, some, some connection is connecting us that we can talk to each other. And I thought it'll be important for me to get a qualified scientist on air to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about the world of science, but also maybe its relationship to spirituality and to, si and to silence. Dr. Kartik Venkat Chalam, I always get his name very funny, but is someone that I've known for quite a number of years. But I've appreciated the depths of his intellect and the vastness of his heart and the way he looks at light, matter, God, humans, silence, science. And I thought it would offer us some insights in today's conversation. Dr. Kartik, welcome and thank you for joining our Spiritual Vaccine Hour. Good evening and Om Shanti, Sister Jana. Very nice to have you. Um, if you've been watching the show earlier today, we are looking at, you know, it all started because I kept talking to people, Kartik, where they were like, oh, I'm so burnt out with Zoom. And the whole thing about science that we're still, you know, we have put so much of ourselves in science and we're still struggling with being contented with just ourselves. You know, I wanted to talk with you about some of the ways that you look through your lens as to the role of science today, but also the role that silence can play if in case science is no longer there. But first, let me start off by asking you about this particular period that we're in and the fact that scientists are looking for a cure, a vaccine for the COVID dilemma that's taking place on the planet. Do you think they're getting closer to actually finding a vaccine for the coronavirus? Are you optimistic? Uh, it's, a, it's a tough question only because there are some vaccine candidates that are being in clinical trials right now and so uh, we don't have the data yet so it will be at least uh, three to four months before we have some uh, insight into that like at least by the end of the year wow wow which is very fast in case of vaccine wow. development well it seems like the whole world is trying to get on the bandwagon of finding a cure for this virus isn't it yes yeah. so there is a lot of uh, public interest and governments are interested and pharmaceutical companies are interested for their own uh, uh, thing yeah. So when so, I so when we look at this coronavirus coming from a scientific and a spiritual perspective, what do you think it means to us at a spiritual level? Because now, Kartik, people are at home. Um, outside of the world is so quiet. There is a kind of a sound of silence over the air, which I love. But I've heard a lot of people are just about having the last of it and they just want to get out. They feel like they're in prison. But what do you think this virus actually means at a spiritual level? Especially the fact that it has us isolated, it has us being quieter. And I read some, some beautiful words from our advanced classes of the Brahma Kumaris. What's your, what's your point of view about what this virus in this particular time means? So I think uh, uh, 
the, personally, I think that uh, this is a time when the earth is kind of uh, pausing. For a second, it's like taking a breath. Like we have been abusing nature for a very long time. And so this is the time when nature has to take the breath. It's like somebody is choking you and then you got like a second of relief and you are just breathing in very hard. And that's what the nature is doing. And so scientifically, I think it makes sense because uh, most of the time we are uh, getting uh, things at a very fast rate and uh, chaos sets in. And so this is like a pausing movement for all those actions. And we do see the result of those passing actions, even though it's involuntary, a virus is forcing it, but you see that the pausing actions have benefit so that we are not traveling at mm -hmm. thousand miles an hour. Which is not a natural speed anyway. So tell me, what's your definition of silence and especially when silence has a power? So for me, the definition of silence, um, scientifically speaking, is kind of conserving the energy that we have. Mm. So it's kind of a potential energy. And when you conserve the potential energy, then you accumulate uh, the energy that's not spent. So it's like a savings account. And so we are then able to do much more than what we can usually do. That's beautiful. Go a little bit further in that, because I remembered when Sister Gita sat with you many, many years ago and gave you the Raj Yoga meditation course. And remember, you were asking her a million questions, and Sister Gita just said to you, Brother, silence is more powerful than science. And that was your awakening. What was it in that you know, one little sentence or word that just popped you open and just made you start to go more into the search of spirituality. Yes, so uh, this was my second class and uh, we were talking about the dynamics of soul consciousness. <laughs> and Sister Gita was teaching this class and I was just introduced to the soul and we were taught that soul is an energy and so my intellect was becoming curious because of having a science background. And so uh, my intellect was racing with thousand questions. And <laughs> uh, uh, even today, uh, uh, I rethink that scene and I always uh, have a chuckle. <laughs> so uh, Sister Gita beautifully stopped my intellect. <laughs> because my intellect was racing and the way she said that silence is powerful than science struck me thinking that I was using my intellect more than what was required. And so at that point, I did realize that this foundation, this spiritual teaching is completely different from the other teachings that I have heard. So so it was a uh, awakening for me. Wow. And that's what shut me uh, for a good reason uh, to learn, uh, to listen. Mm. Yes, Sister Gita does have a way of stopping you in your tracks. <laughs> so you talked about the energy of the soul, uh, that you got the introduction of the soul. And I'd love for you to maybe explain what do you think the soul is because a lot of people say I don't see the soul can I see my soul how do you know I really am a soul how do you really know there's a soul in my body why can't it be that I connect with my heart instead you know from a scientific point of view does it even make sense that really we are souls we're living energies we're a point of living eternal energy behind the eyes how do you scientifically prove it do you prove it scientifically or is it an experience that somebody has to awaken to? Actually, uh, if you see anything around you, any anything that we call systems, we have systems around us. Like for example, right now, we are having this uh, system of a video connection and people are tuning into this uh, beautiful uh, chit chat. And 
we are experiencing this because it is a combination of energy and matter and because it's a combination of energy and matter that is in sync in a very beautiful way somebody has written a software to put all these things together in sync to work in a beautiful way including the hardware so the software is the incognito part and the hardware is the thing that we see so something is running and we know that the software exists but we are not seeing it because it's running in the background so similarly mm. uh, the soul is making the body enact what it wants uh, it's a beautiful system and the software is stored in the soul to run the hardware which is the body and so Uh, it's not hard for us to see that for anything to be functional and useful and beneficial we need to have this combination of energy and matter and that's what we are we are a combination of energy and matter mm i love that so how does silence enter the soul what is the method for human beings to develop a lot of inner silence because right now brother kartik just about over half of the world is in worry and fear not knowing what will happen when the lockdown is over and they try to get, go back to work or get their jobs as you know millions of people in the united states have filed for unemployment thank goodness that the american government has a system that can at least help its people there are other countries where there aren't systems like this that can help people financially So how does silence get restored in one's soul especially during this time where we're not physically moving around too much uh, I would say that silence is the way to order things so basically chaos is something that is invoking disorder in the system and so when there is disorder in the system the functioning of the system is interrupted is not balanced and so there is lot of wastage and so silence is the way to bring about that order where the system restores itself to its let's say factory settings mm-hmm. and the factory settings makes it brand new so the system is now working as brand new so all these waste and fearful and doubtful and chaotic thoughts that we have is because of a dysfunctional system and so we are trying to regain the order of the system by maintaining the silence how do we regain that order of the system by remaining silent because when you go in the thoughts that come up are the disorder that you've been living with and has become normalized is there like I, another source i mean do you do you plug in the computer do you get an outside travel drive i mean do you i don't know all the language <laughs> you do yeah. better than me but do you get like a new upgrade do you you know what is it how do you get the power into into the soul yeah the, the, uh, usually when you have a dysfunctional system you take it to the service guy right <laughs> and in this case uh, the service guy is god and so unless we uh, connect ourselves to the service guy we call him uh, we make sure that he knows what the problem is and connect through our thoughts which is the basic way of connecting to him and that's what we call meditation and so this connection with the perennial source because god is the perennial source of energy and we are discharged this is the way to get ourselves serviced because we are dysfunctional and so there is no other better way to get ourselves corrected so we have to be serviced basically and this mm. is a maintenance thing mm. so how do you connect i mean what what train of thoughts do you have to connect 
to the perennial source to fix your system that's now out of whack? Yes. So usually when we talk about systems, uh, there is always a restore function. So we have to restore ourselves to the original qualities of the soul. And we have to know what are those qualities in the first place for us to get restored because uh, we might unwantedly restore to a previous time point that's not useful. So we need to go back and restore ourselves to the factory settings because you get options where you want to go back. And so sometimes we get stuck in the past but we need to go back to our original state of being. And the original state of being is our uh, primary uh, system restore point. And so we need to identify that point and then make the awareness that I am that point of light who is getting restored to those original settings with the help of the supreme energy or the perennial source. Mm. Mm. Very powerful, very lovely. So what's the proof of the power of inner silence? Share with us some of the, the things that we can look towards knowing that, oh, my power of silence is working. Yes, so you would feel anxious, you would feel worried, you would feel doubtful. You if the power of fearful. silence is working? If the power of silence is working, then you would see the uh, anti-emotions uh, of all these negative oh, feelings. Okay, continue. Please, you have my interest. You have my curiosity. <laughs> yes. So, so everything that we do or say or act in a hasty way will change. Our speech will become slower it will become softer, it will become sweeter, our actions will become elevated, our thoughts will be stable, and we will be unshakable before any situations. So these are the actual uh, representation that silence is working inside and we, have, we, are, we are moving towards the restoration point. Mm. Do we know what the consequence is of losing our inner silence when people become very angry or very jealous or very lustful or their ego takes the best of them? What's the consequence of using one's software in that mode in their particular hardware? So, so basically, uh, our original software is not supposed to do any of those things. Mm. And so the reason that somebody is showing those behaviors itself means there's a grave problem with the software. So do they have a virus the... in their software or, or have they been hacked? <laughs> yes, so it's kind of like they have been hacked and uh, they have been used uh, without their knowledge that their original qualities are wow. being suppressed. And so the best way is to have the antivirus software and the antivirus software is not available with any human beings uh, or any temporary attainments. And... Uh, we mistakenly identify temporary attainments or solutions to the virus problem and that's the so it's it, it has to be a permanent solution and it cannot be a temporary solution so it's like more like you have the coronavirus and you are just taking a medicine that's not working <laughs> or you are taking a medicine that's working temporarily for like two hours just to relieve the symptom but you don't want it to relieve just the symptom, but you want it to relieve the root cause of right. the problem. Right. You want to remove the virus. You want to kill the virus. You don't want to just have a temporary uh, way to like just breathe or have your blood pressure under control or something because that's just suppressing the symptoms, but wow. it's not really curing the problem. <laughs> so the cure so. is 
the cure is the connection to to the, the supreme, to the supreme, the, to God, the peren the perennial source. Yes. Yeah, I believe that. You know that we're in the same boat here on this particular point. I find it just so powerful, Kartik, about just the quietude that's on the planet right now. And even though it's quiet, there's also a sense of anxiety in the minds of individuals, and I'm feeling that vibration as well on the planet. So um, leave us with a practice that everyone who's watching in can implement starting tonight for them to increase the power of their inner silence. And thank you so much for joining us today on such short notice. As usual, you and I could talk for hours on end, but I do have to come to a close. Yes, sure. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And So I... Uh, definitely think uh, the first way to become silent is to make sure that we are silent externally as much as possible. And so the first step is to talk sweetly and softly and slowly as a practice that you can see for yourself. And that will help you to maintain your stage of stability in the mind because if you're going to be loud and be having all kinds of hatred or worry or doubt or fear and you are going to show that in your words and actions it is not going to help you silence your mind so the mm. first step to silence the mind uh, at least from the teachings uh, uh, that i had uh, uh, is that we need to slow down. And, yes. Uh, and that's the first practical step that we can take in order for us to establish that silence inside. Beautiful. So externally we establish the silence and then we can take that silence inside and only talk when it is necessary, only uh, engage if it's necessary, only think if it's necessary. Beautiful. Beautiful practical steps. Kartik, before I let you go, there are folks that are sending in questions for you. Portia Davidson, who, by the way, everyone who has met Portia on our shows, she's doing great. And I hope you had on the I hope you had tuned into our conversation that we had also a few days ago. So Portia's got two questions for you, Kartik. How mm -hmm. does culture play a part? I am Swiss Italian. Loud music everywhere always celebrating, etc. If I was silent, my family would think I was sick. What's wrong? Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Portia, we love you. You are just number one. We just love you. Kartik, you have to answer this one, okay? Swiss Italian, sure. loud music everywhere, always celebrating. If my family found me silent, they would think something's wrong. How would you answer? <laughs> yes. So, so you have the eerie silence and you have the sweet silence. So what we are talking about here is the sweet silence. And the sweet silence comes by us connecting through our intellect to the perennial source. So what happens is it triggers our original qualities that we have been suppressing all this time. So it doesn't matter if you're Swiss Italian or Asian or Chinese or American or South American, doesn't matter. But the original qualities is the same. The, the operating system that we all came in is the same. Right? We all like to be peaceful. We all like to be loving. We all like to be happy. We all like to be in bliss. And we do a lot of actions for that. And so the restoration point for all the souls in the world, the reaction to this coronavirus is the same, regardless of what they are in the body. So deep under our skin, we have an original identity. And that original identity is far more superior and elevated than what we are outside. And so mm. uh, we should reconnect and this is the time that we should reconnect to that original self and forget about 
our sex, our gender, our race, our ethnicity, and all those external factors that keep influencing us. Right. That's going to help. Great answer. Dr. Madhavi wants to share this with you. Um, science is connecting everyone now. We are, we're seeing that with all of the Zooms and everything. Can silence connect everyone? And at what frequency we have to be to do so? So we are already connected. It's just that uh, we have to tune into the channel. So currently, we all, all the souls in the world are connected. And that's the reason why our thoughts affect others. And we don't understand that. And so we keep thinking in a particular way. And the collective consciousness, what we call, is giving that vibrations from our thoughts. And so this is the time for us to connect in silence. And this is the exercise we all need to do so that when we are in sync with the same thought, that's going to reach out. Mm. So it's the vibrational frequency, huh? The vibration of each of our thinking, and then it becomes the collective consciousness. And so we really need to work on that because silence is what is the basis of this collective consciousness. And then we are having all this noise. And so we need to filter the noise and get back to our original state of silence. Okay. That's our original state, silence. Okay. So you have a lot of scientists listening on today. Dr. Parcell sure. wants to know, are you able to write down analogy of the system of scientific and spiritual equivalent system? So maybe um, you can type that in as I'm coming to a close to our show and you write down the, the idea of how you've, you know, explained so beautifully the software, the hardware, the whole thing in mm -hmm. essence. Would that be possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Fantastic. Dr. Kartik Vankataratunam. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many years I've known you, I still just want to call you Dr. V. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, you really so much. you really touched the the mark today and we really do need to increase our power of silence. And I believe, you know, that's what I love about the teachings of Raj Yoga Meditation. It really takes you back to restoring your original settings. And then from there you can decide who you need to become as a result of your connection to God the Supreme. So thanks for your thank eloquence and your simplicity. Thank you very much for this. And uh, uh, I greatly appreciate this opportunity. And I really, really want to thank Sister Geeta for this awakening lesson. And I think uh, uh, she has more to uh, teach uh, than, uh, than what... Uh, 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 I said today, so I'm sure mm -hmm. you all can connect to Sister Gita to know more about silence. Uh, yeah. That's her specialty. So That is so true. Give my love to Sonia, lots of hugs, and I'll Thank talk you. to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, Om, Om Shanti. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This was so important, right, everyone, to have a scientist on air to give us some insights on what this whole thing means. How does the power of silence weigh over the power of science? I hope you've taken a lot from today's conversation, but it's my pure wish that we really start to go more into introspection, um, reflection, journal some more, look at your journey, speak honestly to your part, uh, as Kartik said, go back to your original settings, pure, loving, peaceful, kind, soft, gentle, strong. And then from that place, see how that comes into action day by day. Hmm? <laughs> Thanks a lot. And listen, I want to make a little announcement before I close off. We're going to be launching See Good TV on, hold on, it's coming right here. It's a five-day, a free five-day house call to elevate your mind, body, spirit, and TV. And I'm so proud to be a part of this team that's moving this so profoundly forward. It starts on Monday, April 27th to May 1st. And the timings start from the morning up until 6. So you'll have a choice to choose any one of the amazing, talented media individuals that you'll get a chance to um, meet 
and to learn more about the importance that you are what you watch. For those of you who are watching our programs, you're having some good food for the soul. And I'm very happy that you're doing that. But I just want to close off with just one or two more readings because they're so powerful. Just give me, give me one or two more minutes. Uh, are you all enjoying today's session on silence? So good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Good. Heart, 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 heart. At the moment you experience the power of... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back. The purpose of science is to uncover hidden truths. If you wish to become a scientist, become a spiritual scientist. Truth and God are beautiful. Truth will set you free. And where there's truth, the soul will always dance. There is no limit to being unlimited. And the eternal form of your life can be of sweet silence. This is an easy way to become pure. Nowadays, there's so much power of science, weapons to hurt one another, people make so much loud noise, but you, you have the ability to gain victory over science with the power of your sweet silence. Your silence is yoga. Remembrance of the One Supreme Father up above. And on that note, I will close off with our beloved Daddy Janki. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Um, feel free to send us a message, comment, um, anything that you need. Just let us know. We are here for you. Om Shanti everyone, and thanks again for tuning in. Be safe, take care, be sensible, accumulate your power of inner silence. Silence. मनुष्य कहते हैं हमको शांति चाहिए तो हम अनुभव से कहते हूँ शांति तब आएंगी जब साइलेंस में जाएंगे मन अंदर डीप जाएंगे अंतर जाना माना सब बाहर की बातों को समेट के समा के मैं कौन हूँ अंदर जाओ अंदर डीप जाओ जितना अंदर जाएंगे इतना डीप जाओ जब तक शांति तक सच्ची शांति तक आत्मा अंदर से नहीं अनुभव किया है तब तक जल्दी कोई संकल्प की उत्पत्ति मत करो आदत पड़ गई है देवान के कारण मन कर्मेंद्रों के वश होने के कारण बहुत भटकता है चलायमान हो जाता है डोलायमान हो जाता है बुद्धि फिर अच्छा राइट रंग सच झूठ पाप पुण्य समझते हुए भी बुद्धि ठीक काम नहीं कर सकती इसलिए परमात्मा बाप इशारा करते हैं बच्चे मन को भटकना से छुराने के लिए बुद्धि को स्थिर बनाने के लिए अंदर जाओ आवाज से परे जाओ भले कान खुले है आँख खुली है पर जी चाहता है अंतर्मुखी होकर के एकाग्रता की शक्ति से शांति मेरा स्वधर्म है शांति का सागर परमात्मा है तो लिंक परमात्मा से जुड़ जाती है 
शांति आत्मा का अंदर जाने से अनुभव ये हुआ मेरा स्व का धर्म ही शांत है फिर उसमें ये भी अनुभव होता है सत्य चित्त आनंद स्वरूप आत्मा हूँ सत्यता क्या है तो सच्चाई और शांति साइलेंस में जाने से जो खो बैठे हैं वो वापस अनुभव होती है साइलेंस में जाना पहले तो सब दुनिया के आवाज़ों से निगाहों से परे हो जाना आवाज़ों से परे ले जाने वाला एक ईश्वर है तो अंदर जब आत्मा शांत का अनुभव करती है तो परमात्मा से कनेक्शन जुटने से एक तरफ लाइट बने दूसरी माइट मिल गई लाइट एक है रोशनी दूसरे हल्कापन बॉडी जैसे स्थिति बन जाती है बॉडी कॉन्शियस में भारी बोन है जब बॉडी जैसे स्थिति बनती है शरीर से डिटैच हो जाते हैं ईश्वर से कनेक्शन जुटने से जैसे लाइट बने माइट मिली इतना प्योरिटी का पीस का अनुभव आत्मा में हो जाता तो प्योरिटी पीस लव हैप्पीनेस पावर साइलेंस से ऐसे जैसे खोया हुआ खजाना फिर से मिलता है या परमात्मा बाप से कनेक्शन होने से जैसे साइंस ने कमाल कर दिखाई है तो साइंस है जब पावर हाउस से कनेक्शन है तो सब कुछ मिलता है जैसे ऊपर वाले से आलमैटी से कनेक्शन से जो हम इंसान की आत्मा को शांति की शक्ति चाहिए वो शक्ति स्वयं ही शांत रहने का नेचुरल स्वभाव बन जाता है फिर साइलेंस पावर से अपने ऊपर भी जीत और साइलेंस पावर से दुनिया में सबके साथ संबंध में आते हुए भी सफलता सदाई ऐसे साथ देती फिर अंदर से आवाज़ निकलेगा परमात्मा की दीवी साइलेंस की शक्ति काम कर रही है ओम शांति